this is the fold AR. Now, what the hell is a fold AR? It's literally exactly what it is. It's an AR that folds. There have been ARs that have done this before. They've just been kind of goofy. And honestly, this isn't even the first iteration of it. This is an evolution of where it began before. Now, there are other folding mechanisms like the Law Tactical Folder, which I actually like. The only difference is, is that it folds here at the stock versus folding here at the receiver and where the barrel meets. Now, the benefit of doing that is it allows you to get this unbelievably compact AR-15 inside of some of the smallest bags you can think of. Whereas if you were to use just the folding mechanism at the stock, it makes it smaller, but you still have to deal with the size of the receiver plus the barrel, which makes it unable to be put in certain bags that this particular rifle can be put into. All the ammo used in this video was brought to you by Nosler, maker of the most innovative, most accurate, and most effective bullets and ammunition in the industry. So now I know most people's next question is, well, how the hell does it work? How does it fold? Well, honestly, it's actually pretty kind of damn simple. So as you can see right here, I have it folded and there's a detent right here in the middle where the upper, up where the barrel meets with the upper receiver and actually locks in place. So it'll stay locked in. So all you would have to do to unfold it is push it out. All right, and once you push it out, you have the, the male the male part of the barrel going into the female part of the receiver. And then you take this claw, which will clamp on to the receiver, and then this clip, shut it down. And now you're ready to go. Another thing you have to keep in mind, if your bolt is dropped, you're, you're gonna have to relieve that bolt a little bit. You relieve the bolt a little bit, and then you're good to go. You put it together, not really an issue. Break it down from here. Release some of the pressure on the bolt, and you're good to go. So this clasp is under a lot of tension, which makes sense because if you want the rifle to continue shooting accurately after you fold it back together, you want all the parts to be held together. However, be mindful of the fact that when you pull this, depending on how you pull it, you could end up kind of busting your knuckle here. I've done it a couple of times, so just kind of be wary of that. Um, it's not a deal breaker from, from my standpoint. I just kind of changed the way I go about doing it. And it doesn't hurt as much as just kind of slightly annoying. And so from here, boom. And then as far as the technique on how I like to, how I like to close it, because you have to get this latch to latch, because if you just come here and do this, it's not gonna latch. So you have to make sure that it actually clasps underneath here where the receiver is. The best way I go about doing that is I yank it, I hold it under, slide up and pinch close. Just wanna make sure that this thing, this claw actually grips the hook that allows it to actually clamp down. Uh, otherwise, you're just gonna find yourself with a gun that's still unfolded. The way this rifle actually stays folded whenever it's collapsed is it has a detent. So you have this male piece here that goes into this female piece here. So you literally take this and you fold it, as you can see here, comes in and then you just touch it down and it's kept together by way of friction. It's locked in there, it ain't going nowhere. I wanna fucking... <clears throat> There we go. It's about as much force as you need to do that. But in a bag, that's not really much of an issue. But like I said, you can just yank it from here, put it together, you're good to go. So one of the cool aspects about this AR is that it, you can get the barrel in different barrels and chambering sizes. So I believe they have a 300 blackout, which is about a nine inch. They have this 16 inch 223 wild or 556223. Um, and so, as you can see here, this is where it's attached. The barrel is attached to the upper receiver by way of this hinge pin right here, right? That's the only thing keeping this thing together right now, is that pin. So, what you do, you can, right now I'm gonna do it with my hands. I really couldn't do it with my hands. I actually had to use a tool to do it, but for the sake of the video, I'll just make it look like I did it with my hands. But as you can see, now the two parts are separate, all right? So if I wanted to, I can take this lower and put a nine inch 300 blackout on it. Now, if I did that right now, I'd probably go to jail because that's a felony because this is not a SBR lower. However, this is my Daniel Defense SBR lower. This is the Fold AR nine inch 300 blackout. And all I would need to put the two to two together is the upper receiver. 
I envision this going a lot smoother in my brain. All right, so now I have my Daniel Defense lower, which is SBR. Then I have the Fold AR upper receiver. And then I have the Fold AR barrel. I take these three things together, put them together, and then you have this. So now you have a nine inch 300 blackout with a suppressor. And now just to show you how small this thing can go even more. Now, what I noticed with this 300 blackout is it takes a little bit more give together. And there you go. Look at that. That's nuts. Look how small that is. It's like a, it's like a toy. And then, of course, take it apart. Drop the boat. And we're good to go. All right, so how does the rifle feel? When you start breaking down a rifle, folding it, bending it, doing all this weird stuff to it, you start to question, okay, does it feel kind of wonky? Um, and to be honest with you, it doesn't. Um, it, the one thing that kind of stood out to me when I first picked it up from FFL, this feels a lot better than I thought it would um, because the rifle feels incredibly solid. There's no weird shakes or wobbles or anything like that. You do kind of get, I mean, even this doesn't make any noise, the paracord, nothing shakes, nothing rattles. Um, it doesn't feel like like if you were to give me this rifle blindfolded and I picked it up, nothing about it would make me feel like this rifle could break down and fold. So this gun gives you the ability to do anything you kind of want with a 16 inch AR. It doesn't limit you in any way. And it still feels very solid. Doesn't feel cheap, doesn't feel wonky, doesn't feel like it's been compromised in any way structurally. So I gotta give them credit for that, that they've done a really good job on making this rifle feel just like your regular AR. So it's not even that this is a folding AR, so AR that so happens to fold. So I'm pretty sure the next question then becomes, okay, so what bag can this gun really fit in? Yeah, it folds, it gets really small, but realistically speaking, how small? I've been obsessed with finding ways to carry rifles and bags for the longest. I actually did a video on it where I talked about, is it realistic to actually be able to carry a rifle and a bag on a daily basis? So what I figured out I do is find the smallest bag I can fit this thing into, with a 16 inch barrel. And what I came up with is the Vertex Commuter. So for me, if I was gonna run this, this is probably how I would run it. Because this Vertex Commuter bag is about as small as you can get while still having manageable and usable space in the bag. So for instance, you have this entire front pocket here where you could put stuff. Then you also have stuff in here where you can put stuff. Now, this Vertex bag isn't exactly the most non-obvious bag in the world. It's the least obvious of a lot of the tactical bags out there. But because, but because this bag is a lot smaller in size, no one's gonna see this and think, oh, he has a 16 inch damn rifle inside of his bag. Another beautiful thing about this too is you can also get a plate and put it in the back of the bag as well so that when you do swing it around and you do pull out the firearm, you actually have this as a protection because when this drops down, the plate is now covering up your vital areas. So to me, this makes the most sense in the world. Now I want you to imagine the 300 blackout with a nine inch barrel with a suppressor, how much smaller you could actually make that. So I, I gotta say, there's a lot to be said about the fact that this bag or this fold AR does a really good job at minimizing the footprint of the AR while still making it incredibly functional. Does it hold zero? You see, when you turn an AR into an origami arts project, it doesn't matter how small you can make it. The only thing that matters is, is it reliable and will it hold a zero? Then how small you can make it becomes relevant. Fold AR suggests a break-in process of 500 rounds. Shooting 77 grain Nosler jacketed hollow points, I started at 25 yards, put the gun together, shot it, then broke it down. Went back to 50 yards, put it together, shot it, then broke it down again. Went back to 75 yards and put it back together, then shot it. This was the result. That's standing freehand. One thing I wasn't expecting from the Fold AR was how fast and soft it shot. When I was mag dumping, my red dot just danced in a nearly perfect circle like a little red mosh pit. So I could sit on the target effortlessly and treat the still target like a percussion instrument. The rifle weighs about 6.15 pounds, so it's not a heavy rifle considering all of its transformer folding parts, and it's pretty balanced too. But 
This all makes sense considering it's running a two-stage Goxy trigger with a mid-length gas system and a Huxworks flash hider hanging off the front end. Then there's also the folding parts positioned as near as can be to the rifle center of gravity. So long story short, the gun shoots and handles well. I'm no engineer, but if I played one on TV, I'd try to find a way to make the clamp smaller. And as I said before, remove all branding from the clamp as I think it draws too much attention to the fact that this rifle folds in half, which is admittedly the whole point of the rifle. But the less reminders that this rifle folds, the cooler I think this rifle becomes. Now, this isn't a deal breaker for me as the clamp does a very good job of keeping the rifle feeling tight and being tight, which is probably way more important. At $1,999 for the 16 inch 223 Wild version and the 300 Black, and $2,199 for the 6.5 Grendel, the Fold AR is sitting on the upper level of typical AR prices. If you find the folding aspect of this rifle as a major benefit, you likely expected that price. If you were slightly indifferent and see the folding component as a novelty, you may struggle a little to justify those prices. Personally, I thought it would be more because some companies have a tendency to overprice their novel ideas, thinking everyone else will see the same value. So final thoughts. Um, I think this rifle is pretty damn good. I'm not gonna lie and say that a part of it being so good to me isn't because I had kind of low expectations for it to begin with. I mean, it's a folding AR, it screams gimmick. But uh, it, 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 it has removed itself from the gimmick category in my mind, largely because nothing about its foldability has impeded its ability to be a good AR. Now, the question is, who is it for? Um, I think one is for someone like me, who's obsessed with finding ways to carry rifles in as small a package as possible. Um, I think it's be pretty good for somebody who is constantly on the road, like overlanders, uh, people who are constantly looking for ways to minimize space, but then still want a full powered form of self-protection um, from four-legged or two-legged creatures. Um, I also think there is an argument to be made that it could be a good one and only AR-15. And I say, an argument that can be made because I don't know if I'm quite sure I'm there yet to say that this absolutely is a great one AR-15 option. But for somebody who's looking for just one AR-15 that has a lot of versatility in terms of self-defense, I can run a can on this, you can put night vision on this, you can put a one to four, you can put a one to six, um, you, can put a, you can put a two to 10, you can put a three to 945. Nothing about the foldability of this impedes the ability of this rifle. However, you also then get the benefit of it being able to fold. So if this is your one rifle, only one option rifle, and you wanna minimize that space, and you want the ability to pretty much take it wherever you want, that's what the folding aspect gives you. Um, and it does it exceptionally well. And so, me personally, I think I'm gonna be running this in the 300 Black configuration with the suppressor. I love that setup, I love how small it gets. I generally run around with the six hour Rattler. I still will do that, but I do think there's a place for the 300 blackout foldability for me in my life. I just haven't quite figured out exactly where and how to implement that because I can get that thing smaller, but then I technically can deploy the Rattler a little bit faster. But then I have a nine inch barrel with a suppressor and I can't actually run the Rattler in this configuration suppressed. And see, now I'm getting into the weeds of this thing. See, I'm doing it again. But either way, I'll probably do a follow-up video talking about that aspect of it. But here's the fold AR. Color me impressed. And yes, AR-15s are protected by the Second Amendment. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It didn't say only handguns. It said arms. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.